Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm filming the what's in my hospital bag and what's in my baby's hospital bag for my labor and delivery. I am currently 37 weeks pregnant in my second pregnancy, so this will be my second labor and delivery experience. The first time around, I had no idea what I was doing. I practically moved into the hospital. I showed up there with a suitcase and my shoes got stolen. I'm hoping for a shorter stay at the hospital this time. And I'm also hoping I get to go home in real shoes this time. That would be nice. Except I am delivering during a pandemic. So there's still plenty of things that could go crazy. If you guys enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up to let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And a huge thank you to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. My hair looks straight yellow on this camera. I do not understand. I'm not this like, pasty and yellow in real life. Or am I? <laughs> I don't see anyone nowadays. We're full blown quarantining around here because I'm about to go into labor and delivery. So maybe I actually do look like that and there's just no one around me to tell me. With my first labor and delivery experience, I packed a suitcase for myself. I'm not doing that this time around. I am packing two bags, one bag for me, one bag for baby. And because it is a pandemic right now, the bags that I'm choosing to use, I'm bringing because they're like very easy to like wipe down. So I can just leave them outside. I can run wipes over them. Like they're not fabric. That's part of the reason I didn't want to bring my rolly suitcase. This is the bag that I'm bringing with me for my hospital bag. Um, if I can find the brand, I will link it down below. I feel really bad not knowing it, but there's no tag on the inside that says it. For baby, I'm bringing a very similar bag. This is another duffel style bag. You can easily wipe this down. This is such a perfect bag to be bringing to the hospital. This is by CalPAC. It's one of their newer duffels. So I will link this down below in the description. I'm going to be packing my bag along to this video while showing you guys what's inside of it. So you see how I pack everything. I personally use packing cubes to keep my bags more organized. And I also label my packing cubes this way. When I'm at the hospital, I can tell my husband, hey, quickly grab that bag that has my pajamas in it or the bag that says baby swaddles. It's a lot easier to stay organized and just pull out one thing out of the bag versus like rooting through a whole unpacked bag. Starting my hospital bag, I will show you guys my toiletries bag. And I'm trying to keep it minimal, trying to bring like the least amount of stuff possible. The hospital does provide a lot for you. So I know that as far as like pain management goes, they will have all of that stuff. And I kind of just need like the very basic minimum things that I want. In my toiletry bag, I have this little toothbrush kit. It's got a very basic toothbrush, a mini toothpaste, a mini floss, and the toothpaste and floss in there my husband can use also. I'm going to be bringing a deodorant, and then I'm also going to be bringing a travel size dry shampoo. I just picked up this tiny little bottle of dry shampoo at Target. I will be bringing chapstick. I found this, it's like cortisone chapstick, and it's the only thing that actually helps my dry lips. My lips get so incredibly dry. I live in Chicago and my lips like crack and bleed. So this kind of medicated chapstick is the only thing that actually works for me. And it's so dry in the hospital. So I wanted to have this with me. I'm packing baby aspirin. I am prescribed to be on baby aspirin. I've been on it since pretty much the start of my pregnancy because I had high blood pressure last time. So I'm sure the hospital has this but I'm just packing it because I take it regularly anyway, so I'm just bringing it with me in case I need to continue taking it. I'm also going to be packing my prenatal vitamins. I take the prenatal vitamins by ritual for the same reason. You still need to be taking your prenatal vitamins while you're in labor, right after labor while you're breastfeeding. These are still really important, so I'm going to be packing these in my bag with me. Wanted to say a huge thank you to Ritual for partnering with me and sponsoring today's video. I've been using Ritual prenatal vitamins for this entire pregnancy. I made this switch from my old prenatal vitamins that I was using for my last pregnancy after I found out that they contained additives and fillers I was not aware of. And my old prenatals, I had to take four massive pills every single day and they had a weird aftertaste. It was not a pleasant experience. Ritual has no fillers, no colorants, and no shady additives. It's vegan friendly, non-GMO, and allergen free. They have 12 high quality ingredients, including DHA and folate, which all support a strong foundation for you and your baby. And they're all in clean, absorbable forms. They have a delayed release, no nausea capsule design. They are scientist and nutritionist recommended. To me personally, they don't have like a weird taste or have like a weird fishy taste that my old prenatal vitamin 
haven't had. And I love that it's only two capsules a day. It's so much more manageable. They have more than just prenatal vitamins. They have essential vitamins for women and men. And now they also have kids gummies. If you would like to try out Ritual, they are offering 10% off of your first three months on their multivitamins. Go to ritual.com slash Chrisman to start your ritual today. Again, huge thank you to Ritual for partnering with me and sponsoring today's video. I'm packing a mini sized hairbrush in my toiletry kit. I'm not bringing my full size one. I just grabbed this again in the travel size section at Target so I could quickly throw it in my bag, use the least amount of space possible. It is purely just to get the job done. I'm also bringing a scrunchie in my hospital bag. Nothing is worse than being without a hair dye. So I will have an extra hair dye. I am bringing a small makeup bag with me. And the reason I'm bringing a makeup bag to the hospital is because, again, if I want to take that first family photo, um, I brought a makeup bag with me last time and I just quickly threw on like a little bit of foundation and mascara and helped me make me feel like a little bit more alive. So when we sent out pictures to our family and friends, I didn't look like I was like <laughs> so tired because I was. We'll see if I use this this time around. I feel like... First time around, Carly tried a lot harder than Carly right now. You know, pandemic Carly, woo, doesn't try. So the friends and fam might just get like a baby photo <laughs> and I might wait till like a week later at home to put on makeup and take our big family picture. I don't know, we'll see. The only kind of like mom pain management thing that I'm packing with me is a small thing of nipple cream. And I don't think I need this. I do think the hospital provides this, but I just have it. So I'm putting it in my bag just in case I want it. For clothing, I feel like I'm better prepared this time around. Also, I still feel like I'm trying to keep it minimal and not pack too much. I do think last time I stayed in like the same pajama set for two or three days. And then I changed into my going home outfit and my going home outfit last time, I'll put a picture in here. I brought like Spanx leggings and a Burberry wrap. Like what is wrong with me? <laughs> I really wanted to have that like cute going home photo and like I wanted to be like the chic mom and it's like, girl, what is wrong with you? Ain't no way am I squeezing myself into Spanx leggings to go home from the hospital after this birth. You're gonna see me looking like a college frat kid leaving in massive sweatpants this time around. It's gonna be so different. Oh, and in the going home photo last time you see that I'm wearing slippers because my brand new Ugg boots that I went to the hospital in got stolen. Yeah, I shouldn't say stolen because I can't prove it. But all I'll say is I went to the hospital in brand new Ugg boots. My Ugg boots were no longer in my room and I could not wear my Ugg boots home. So at some point they were taken out of my room. By someone who wasn't me. <laughs> so this time around for my clothing, I am packing a universal labor and delivery gown. I did not know about these my last labor around. I don't know if these were a thing last time, but I'm packing one now and I really hope I can use this. I'm not sure if my hospital will allow this. But the one I'm packing has Velcro all the way down the front and the back. So I feel like I should be able to wear it because they have full access from front and back. There were some available online that only had frontal access. And I know if you want to get like an epidural or if they have anything going on in that back that they need to check, you need to have the back access. I got this like dark gray, really comfy looking maternity gown. And I love that it has pockets on it. It's like a comfy t-shirt material this way. If I have the ability to like walk or move around, I can keep my phone in my pocket. And it's just a lot comfier than the hospital labor and delivery gowns. My hospital gives you the postpartum like mesh underwear situation. I'm bringing maybe one to two pairs of the Freedom Mom disposable underwear just in case I like those more. Um, I am also packing one to two pairs of like going home underwear in case I wanna wear those. I remember just personal preference when I got home from the hospital last time. I preferred to be in my own underwear versus the mesh underwear. I just felt like it was more supportive and comfortable. The pair that I got, I believe these are from Kindred Bravely. They're high-waisted in case you know you have to have a C-section, you have an incision. These are high-waisted for support to keep everything in and I feel like they might be a little bit more comfortable for the ride home versus the actual like hospital mesh underwear. But don't quote me on that. I'm bringing two pairs of Angel maternity loungewear pants. I bought the sets that come with 
the cardigans and the nursing tank tops. These pants have been a lifesaver. I've worn them so much throughout this pregnancy. They are completely stretchy, but they don't have like a thick elastic band so they don't hurt around your bump. They're just like full on stretch pants. They are so comfortable and they are banded at the ankle, which is really important for me because I'm a really tall girl. I'm five foot 11. So the pajama sets that are like the, not flare, but just like the pants that go down like kind of boot cutter flare pajama pants. I typically can't wear because they're too short on me and it looks like I'm wearing my little sister's pajama pants because they're like this much shorter and then there's my ankle. I personally need pajama pants that are tight at the bottom so they look intentional, intentionally short. I packed two pairs, one to wear in after my labor and delivery so I'll have like a cute pair of pajamas that I can sleep in and be in and then one to wear home. So once we're ready to leave, I'll change out of the old ones that I wore in the hospital and put on a new pair for the car and to go into our house. I'm packing a long sleeve button up pajama shirt to wear with the angel maternity pants. So I'm packing the long sleeve button up because this way I could just unbutton it quickly to do skin to skin in nursing, but then I'm not freezing. Like I've got the long sleeve still on. For going home, I packed a nursing cami and then I'm gonna wear the angel maternity cardigan that came with the pants. It's like the matching set. So I'm just gonna wear the nursing cami this way in case I need to like quickly nurse the baby before we leave. I can just unpop that, but still be in the clothes and then put my coat on. I'm packing some comfortable socks to go home in. I'm packing a couple pairs. So one pair to wear around the hospital to sleep in and then one pair to actually go home in. I know the hospital gives you socks with grippers on them. So I'm probably gonna end up just using their socks during labor and delivery. And then the last thing I'm trying to decide like clothing wise is if I need a pair of flip flops in case I want to shower, I might just throw them in last minute so I have the option in case I want it. I do remember showering last time because I was there for six days and it was like a glorious experience to be able to get in the shower. So I might quickly throw on a pair of flip flops. I'm bringing a little technology packing cube and my husband and I are going to share splitting up bringing the technology so he's gonna bring the extra chargers and charging heads. I'm gonna have a portable phone charger, like a Mophie kind of situation with an extra long cord as well. So that way we can make sure our phones are charged no matter what. I'm also packing this crazy looking tripod thing and I'm packing this with so we can hopefully take our first family photo. Uh, last time we had a family member take it for us because family could visit in the hospital this time around with the pandemic and now with the pandemic like getting worse and all the COVID cases going up, you are not allowed any visitors at all. So thankfully I'm still allowed my husband, my support person, but we're not allowed to have anyone come visit us afterwards. I've also got a Bluetooth remote so I can just, you know, snap it ourselves with our new little baby. I am so extra. As I'm saying this, I feel ridiculous. <laughs> I'm also bringing a tiny little tripod for my vlogging camera. I'm bringing my vlogging camera. I'm bringing an extra battery and the charger for my vlogging camera. It's like the YouTuber section of my labor bag. I'm also bringing a portable sound machine. This is something we did not have the first time around. I got the portable sound machine to start using from day one with our son. So hopefully his first few nights sleeping with the sound machine, he feels more comforted. He feels a little bit more, you know, at peace and like a similar environment with that. So we're gonna start using that right away. Because it's a pandemic, I'm going to be packing masks. I've got a whole little pack of the surgical kind of masks that I'm keeping in my bag. So I'm bringing a thing of Clorox wipes and I'm bringing some hand sanitizer. Like we are going all out. We're gonna sanitize our little area and everything because I'm kind of scared with the cases going up don't want any of us or the baby to catch anything while in the hospital. I am bringing a boppy with me. This is a nursing pillow. And I remember the first time around, I did not bring a nursing pillow with me and I really regretted it. I kept trying to shove like pillows up under me to have my daughter breastfeed on and it was very uncomfortable. So I'm going to be bringing a boppy this time around. I'm also going to be bringing my own kind of pillow. But like I said, I'm not bringing a pillow that I actually sleep on in our bed. I'm bringing just a random pillow with a random pillowcase just so I have something to use in the hospital to make sleeping more comfortable. I'm also going to be packing these little lactation cookies. I did not bring these last time, but I am bringing them this time because I'm gonna start eating them right after labor to hopefully increase my milk supply. When we were there last time, my husband was able to run out to this little place in the hospital that had like an oat milkshake, so it was helpful also 
for starting milk production, but I just don't know if that place is still in the hospital or with COVID, if they're still operating, like we don't know what we're getting into. So I'm just packing these just in case. Now on to what's in my baby's hospital bag for labor and delivery. Like I said, I'm packing my baby's stuff in this CalPAC bag. It's super great. There's a ton of space. It's easy to wipe down. Highly recommend this bag. I'm packing a handful of newborn diapers and I know the hospital gives out diapers, but I'm just bringing a couple just in case and also just in case, you know, for like the ride home or something. Again, I'm sure they're gonna give us a ton of these, but I'm bringing some just in case because like I'm a mom, I always have diapers on me. I'm bringing a pack of wipes and a lot of videos say the hospital gives you wipes, you don't need these, but our hospital that we delivered at didn't give us wipes. That was the one thing last time around that we were like, we definitely messed up, we needed wipes because the hospital gave us these like t paper towel kind of things that were not wet at all. We had to wet them down. It was impossible to clean her. Like it was a disaster. So I'm packing a big thing of wipes. <laughs> I'm packing a pacifier for baby boy for his clothes. I'm bringing two zip up onesies in different sizes. So I'm bringing a newborn zip up onesie as well as a zero to three months because we don't know what size he will be. Kennedy was in newborns for quite some time because she was six pounds. So it took her a little bit to get into the zero to three month size. So if he's anything like his sister, he'll fit right into the newborns. And then I'm bringing a magnetic two piece set. And then I also have a knotted hat and gown. This is for us to take his first picture in. Now that I'm saying this, I'm like, should I pack one more outfit? I don't wanna pack a ton of clothes though. Like I don't wanna overdo it. I'm packing a couple of hats and the hospital gives out hats. I'm just packing the hats that like matches outfits and they really don't take up a ton of space. And then I'm packing a couple of bibs as well. I'm packing a pair of baby socks and all the outfits I showed have feet coverings on them. But for some reason, if he has his feet out and he has a need for it, I wanna have them on me. I'm also packing his name signs. We got like an engraved name sign off of Etsy. We're pretty committed, which this feels really exciting and crazy to say because with Kennedy, we were still deciding her full name in the labor and delivery room. But I also ordered the empty name signs, like the hello, my name is stickers, just in case. So I'm packing those as well. So in case we change his name, if we see him and we're like, no way, you are totally, uh, you know, whatever, then we have the option to write that as well for the family picture. We're bringing his car seat with us. We personally have the Nuna Pippa Light. It's what I used with my daughter. Highly recommend this car seat. It is like the lightest car seat available. And you know, if you're carting around a car seat and a baby, it gets really heavy. And this car seat is a game changer. And then on top of the car seat, we have a car seat cover to keep the baby warm. This one is, I think the brand JJ Cole. I bought this black one, works super well, super warm. It's like a blanket, it's awesome. And then this time around for the nurses, I'm bringing cards and gift cards to hand out while I'm there. I don't know like with the COVID situation, what everyone's level of comfort is. So I don't wanna bring like snacks and other things I've seen recommended because I just don't know what people are comfortable with. So instead I'm just going to give them all a card with some gift cards. So far I've picked up like Starbucks gift cards and other things that I'm thinking about, like what places are available in the hospital that they could easily use the gift card at or what places like would I want a gift card to. You know, I think everyone could use a Starbucks gift card, some food gift cards, maybe a Visa gift card. That's what I'm going with this time around because I feel like it's the most sanitary and helpful option, but I'm gonna have cards with the gift cards in them that I can just give to the nurses who are working during their shift. Okay, I think that's all for what's in my hospital bag. I'm sorry if this video was all over the place. If you guys did enjoy watching it, please give the video a thumbs up to let me know and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram if you wanna see updates in the moment. I'll probably be sharing over on Instagram stories when it's baby time and when I'm heading into the hospital. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.